Jesus prays for the unity of the church. And He prays for the impact of a unified church. And thirdly, Jesus prays for the glory of a unified church. Look at verse 22. Verse 22 in our text says, And the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. Now the Greek word that's translated here as glory is the word doxa. Doxa. It's the root from which we get the word doxology. When it's used in the New Testament, it's always characterized as a good opinion concerning someone that results in praise and honor. It also means a most exalted state. In that sense, we can translate this verse to mean that Christ desires for His church here on earth to be so united that He'll be raised up. That Jesus will be raised up and, 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 and placed in high esteem by all those around us. All of those who witness a unified church. Now that Greek word doxa also means splendor. It means brightness, magnificence, excellence, blessedness, preeminence, dignity, grace, majesty. You know, God has already revealed more glory than we can comprehend in this life. We just can't wrap our heads around it. When we see the crown jewel of this revelation in the God-man, Jesus. Back in the first chapter of John's Gospel in verse 14, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld His glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The purpose of His revealing His glory to us is so that we might be one. In verse 22, that the glory which You gave Me, I have given to them, that they may be one just as we are one. And that same glory actually changes us now. 2 Corinthians 3.18 reminds us we're being transformed to the same image from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. In other words, we can truly become one when we get our eyes off of one another and contemplate the glory of Jesus. Jesus. 